So everyone has been a beginner at one stage with photography. All you need to do is pick up a camera and start taking photos. But pretty much where do you start? You have to make mistakes to learn from them and obviously get better. So in this video, I'm gonna give you five top mistakes that beginners make and tips on how to improve those. What's going on guys? My name is Jason Morris and today I'm going to talk about five mistakes that beginner photographers make and obviously tips on how to improve that. Now sometimes we do need to make mistakes to obviously improve and get better. Uh, this is how we become better photographers in general. I've made some of these mistakes as well in the past um, but I've overcome that because I've understood what kind of mistakes I've made and I've corrected them and made myself a better photographer for it. Now the first tip is out of focus. Now I can't stress this enough. You really need to have nice focus shots. So if you are shooting portraiture, you really need to get nice tack sharp images at least on the face. If not the face, you are aiming for the eye. It is very important to get tack sharp images on the eye. Now a lot of these new cameras have eye autofocus and that helps you get that eye in focus. But one of the biggest things when it comes down to beginner photographers and they're moving off their basic uh, kit lens and they're going for a really fast lens, say like a 1.4 or 1.8, uh, don't always shoot in 1.4 or 1.8, whatever the largest aperture is, because that gives you a shallower depth of field to work with. So what actually happens is if your subject moves like a centimeter forward or you move a centimeter back, boom, you're out of focus already. It is just such small movements that will pull the focus from the eye onto say the nose. Now, what, how you overcome this? Well, you just gotta stop it down. You don't always have to shoot in 1.4 or 1.8. You can shoot in 2.8, you can shoot in four. A lot of lenses that I've done a review, you know, go into my uh, lens reviews and you'll see the lens is at its peak sharpness at around 5.6 or even f8. That's when you get extreme amounts of sharpness. Obviously, uh, you will see a lot more of the background. You won't have as much shallow depth of field. So I wouldn't recommend shooting portraiture such a small aperture uh, because that depth of field does look really good and we are after that nice depth of field. But you need to find that happy medium, especially if you don't have a camera that has that eye autofocus. Now secondly is the horizon. Now it, I really hate seeing this, especially well, what they call it in the industry is Dutch crop, is if your horizon is sort of on an angle and everything just looks wrong. It just looks like everything's tilting down. You do not want this, unless it's for a creative purpose, you are doing that Dutch crop. Um, but most of the times when it's a beginner photographer, it's not on purpose. Use those grid lines in your manual settings. So you can go into your settings and put grid lines through your viewfinder or optical viewfinder, um, or sorry, electronic viewfinder, whichever it is. You can get your rule of thirds as well, two vertical lines and two horizontal lines, that'll put it up there and you can line up your horizons with those lines. Uh, that makes it so much more convenient. So the third one is composition. Now composition takes a long time to master. There are a lot of different things when it comes down to composition. Say rule of thirds, uh, leading lines, uh, framing the subject, all these things are really important when it comes down to photography. So the rule of thirds is like I said before, those two vertical lines and two horizontal lines and lining your subject up in one of those thirds. Whether it's the horizon in the top third or it's a subject if you're doing portraiture in one of the left or right thirds as well. Um, leading lines can come down to having a, a subject in the middle and you've got these natural borders leading into the subject. So it draws the eyes of the viewer into the subject. It's really cool when you nail this, especially like let's say you've got a, a railing, for instance, and you've got a subject next to the railing. You can position the subject on the rule of thirds and have that railing lead into the subject. And that'll draw the eyes into the subject. It's really handy. With the borders, you can actually use, let's say, a doorway. 
So if you shoot your subject through the doorway, you're pretty much creating a frame which makes your viewer focus directly into that frame. These little tips can make a massive difference to your photography. Number four is one of the most important parts, and that is lighting. Now, as a be beginner photographer, you generally pick up the camera and you don't have any other equipment. You've got a camera, you've got a lens, you've got feet, you're out there and you're shooting. It is really important to start thinking about lighting. So shooting at golden hour, so sunrise or sunset, it's within that hour of sunrise and sunset, it gives you that really nice soft lighting to shoot in. So with photography, you generally have a speed line and maybe a soft box, um, off camera, you don't want to have off on camera flash, it's way too harsh. You'll need a speed light with a soft box and the bigger the box, the softer the light is going to be. If you got just a really small soft box on top of the speed light, it's still gonna be really harsh lighting. You really need to disperse the light into a nice large soft box. So the big thing about that is that it really pops the subject out from the background when you're shooting, say, portraiture. Now, I predominantly shoot in manual 100% of the time. There are a couple of different instances where I may use a shutter priority or aperture priority, but I'll never ever chuck it in auto anymore. It is a good place to start, so you can start thinking about framing first, um, but when you got more control over your settings, this is when you get much cleaner images, especially if you are after the light went out. Anyway, where was I? Especially if you are after trying to work on depth of field, just chucking an aperture priority may not be enough because it may adjust your shutter speed too low, which will give you a shaky image or a blurry image, or it may increase the ISO too high and obviously your shutter speed too high to compensate. And you don't want too much grain in your image. So you wanna try and adjust it manually so you have full control of what you are doing. Now also when it comes down to manual, white balance is pretty important as well. Now I use, I use one of these. It's either a white card or a gray card. You can use these. It is best to do it um, right there and then in the camera. Um, a lot of the cameras auto white balance is really good these days, but when it comes to let's say these blue lights here That can really throw out the white balance in the camera because the camera is thinking oh, okay It's blue so I need to add a bit of oranges or um, make it a bit warmer um, Also these lights here have a different um, Setting as well Kelvin setting so you really do need to do this before you do um, take the photos um, but just definitely put it in front of the lighting that you are going to capture. Now you can do it in post, so if I do hold this up right now, then I can change it in post as well. Um, if you are shooting in JPEG, it does make a big difference, and if you are changing it in after, it's not as good, but if you are shooting in raw, you can just take a photo of this, and then in post, just take the uh, the dropper and drop it onto the white and change the white balance there. That'll give you just those nice uh, tones that the camera manufacturers have actually designed their camera for to um, to work on their color scheme. So obviously Canon apparently has the best uh, color scheme or color science is what they call it. Um, so if you do white balance, um, it'll bring out those in in uh, in your images. So that's it from me guys. Please smash that like button if you could. That would be absolutely amazing. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, please do. I would absolutely love that. I've just reached a thousand. I'm trying to really grow this small YouTube channel up and I'm pumping out as much content for you guys as possible. Obviously quality content, well in my opinion, I'm trying to pump out quality content. Subscribe, um, hit the bell notification as well. If you already haven't, that'll give you some notifications when my new content drops. Um, a comment below if you found these useful, if you still use these. Um, also, my name's Jason Morris, and guys, I'll see you in the next video. Let's get it.